Now uh, you're on. <laughs> I, the whole thing already? No, no, no. It, it was uh, it was on the whole time. It just sometimes I'm like, wait a minute. Uh. I've oh, got 45 minutes of an interview before, and they're like, oh, we gotta start over. I'm just like, oh. Oh, so man. I'm glad that didn't happen this time. It's like starting a song over, right? It's not train wreck city. Now you're on tour with Deathlock, Machine Head, and Black Dolly Murder. That's that's uh, that's a solid lineup. Yeah, yeah, it's been a solid tour. The big big venues, nice. Good turnouts, awesome. It's Machine Head's first day back today, finally, after they had their little, uh, you know, Rob had that hernia, a double hernia, where he had to have surgery and stuff. They've, mi- they've missed two weeks, so that's their first day back. They've been plagued with bad luck for the whole tour, so hopefully the rest of it goes smoothly for them. It's nice to have them back. Nice guys. And uh, when you miss stuff like that, it comes out of your pay, right? Uh, yeah, that's going to, two weeks of a tour getting chopped out, that That'll kill your profit in a hurry. So they're probably just doing the rest of the tour now just to make up for the losses, which is so frustrating. We've done that before, too. So I f- feel feel their pain, but, you know, hopefully they should be good to go now. Absolutely. And this is their hometown, too. Now, um, oh, oh, yeah, well, it's, yeah, they're from this area. Yeah, that'll be good. I'm glad we're going on before them. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to go on after them in their hometown. Yeah, That'd be that would, awful. That would be maybe difficult. Uh, you guys have a lot of a lot of fans here, so I I can't imagine that it would be that horrendous. It wouldn't be like following Slayer anywhere. Yeah, it should be okay. We've had hot, hot and cold shows in Northern California, so it all depends. You know, it's a Monday tonight, so we'll see what the vibes are like. Monday and Tuesday vibes are a lot different than Friday and Saturday vibes, so we'll see how it goes tonight. Now, I've seen Kill Switch engage with Slayer before, and it seemed to me like they played their heavier stuff when they played with Slayer. Do you, ch- uh, you, gotta, do you change your sets to, to gel towards a particular band that you might be opening for or tour? Yeah, we've made a few minor adjustments for like just heavier stuff because we've been lucky enough to be able to do all kinds of tours. So we can do a very metal tour like this, and we can also go out with... Uh, you know, we could go out with Papa Roach and Saving Abel probably and pull it off. So, uh, we still got to play. Like, you know, if a song's big on the radio, we're going to play it regardless because our fans that are coming to this show, no matter what, want to hear that. So, we're not going to take out every song but that's like has singing or whatever. But uh, we definitely have a couple songs in there that we haven't played in a little bit, but, you know, they're faster and heavier. And it's nice to get the uh especially when you're playing at 715 nice to get the the crowd's blood flowing a little like tonight we're playing at 715 so you get the crowd moving a little faster you get some more up tempo stuff happening it's nice than just playing all like mid tempo singing songs so and it's fun for us too because we play some more obscure songs that we don't get to all the time more satisfying ourselves than it is for anybody else <laughs> sure now are you played with you went on tour with devil wears prada that's you're not necessarily a much older band, but that sort of that was I, I can say that's sort of ballsy to go off, or or a, a mistake maybe. Well, you go you do uh, you do a, a, a more metal like very like metal metal tour like this, and you know you play your metal songs, and you go you can go do a radio tour with Seven Dust or something, and then we can fit in great on those tours now. You go and do those tours with those Warp tour bands that are really like hot at the time and auto-tuned maybe just those tour and this has no reflection on like people in those bands or anything but man those tours suck (laughs) those kids are 14 they're you know not not the band people the bit that like you know the bands are doing their thing you know good for them for doing well but uh the kids that go to see them are the warp tour kids and they're 14 and they're texting the whole time they're not even looking up at the stage until the uh the hot band goes on stage you know so it's it's that tours like that i just when i see that we get on those i'm just like oh god here we go <laughs> just be prepared prepare to be pissed off for four or five weeks straight but uh that devil wears prada one was okay it wasn't that bad but it's just you know those kids are those they don't know anything about music it's just a trend you know it's just a trend that's going at the time and those kids are going to show up to hang out with their friends and you know tweet about it (laughs) it sucks that's why a tour like this even though it's like really really metal and there's going to be some death metal kids out there that hate our guts it's just people that are into music and it's just a lot better people that are just actually like you know machine head has a little bit of an older fan base they've been around for so long so it's nice to just 
people that like music and are going to listen and pay attention instead of just going, you know, when's the when's the band with the funny haircut going to go on? Because I want to see them. Because they're someone told me at Warp Tour that they're cool to like oh, now. Yeah. I hate that. So. I'd rather do a tour like this or do just do a flat out radio tour where it's like Seven Dust or Papa Roach or something like that. It was like one or the other is good with me. Those warp tour lineups to me are just blah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they could be tough for uh, some of those older folk. Now you have a new album, A War You Cannot Win, which sold 25K in its first week. Did that reach its projected sales goal? Yeah, it's pretty much what was expected. There's no... Uh, you know, we did like 25 or 30 on the last one or something like that. So it's just, as the music industry just declines every two years and the percentages of CD sales goes down every two years, if you're selling just about as much as you did a couple of years ago, technically you're selling more because, you know, the, the, the business yeah, is just tanking so bad. So uh, for us to do that, it was good. It was, just, it was kind of what was expected, so. You know, it would have been cool to sell 100,000, but, you know. <laughs> More than Mario, for sure. Now you have a new video, um, and you did it with PR Brown. Did you pick him? Did you guys uh, go over directors and pick that one, or was he picked for you? Yeah, we did a lot of fo We did a photo shoot, a lot of all the photos for the album we did with him, and he's just really good, and he just gets to the point, just gets everything done quickly, instead of like, you know, you go to a photo shoot with certain photographers, you're there for 12 hours taking a 1,000 shots, and it's all the same and you're wondering why you're there for so long and he's more of like a he's just like I know what I want just boom 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 get it done and he's the same way with videos as he is with photos so and the video is the same way we went in he got his shots that he needed we've done ta we've done videos where it was 30 40 50 takes 12 12 hours sitting there just killing ourselves and we were there for like two hours and he's like oh that's cool you know 10 takes or something like that like, no you guys are good you can go home now we'll edit you know the rest and it's fine so he's just I would love to do every photo shoot and every video with that guy if it was possible. He's amazing. Did you do a, one in the desert with a helicopter, right? Yeah, I don't. I don't think that was him. Was that him? No, I don't think so. But you were talking about, that you know, was a long time. I mean, that was seven, six, six years ago. Yeah, that was a fun one. That was that came out cool. Yeah, it came out very good. But that was a billion takes over 10, 12 hours. You know, it was one of those things. Just like, ugh. But uh, yeah, I would much rather be there for an hour or two than 12. <laughs> well, that's what happens when you allow yourself to be directed, right? Yeah. When you're fake playing for 10 hours, you just, it gets exhausting. Now, the lyrics, uh, you're obviously um, not a lyricist, but are you, does, does, <laughs> does Phil um, explain lyrics to you, or is he just does his part and you do yours? No, nah, yes. Yeah, he just does his thing. We don't ask. You know, it's just, he uh, he gets asked in every single interview about lyrics and stuff like that. He hates it. And more leave leave the lyrics. It's always been a leave the lyrics for the, the listener's interpretation, uh, which is a good thing to do because everybody makes. You know, that's what music's for. You know, you make you turn it. You hear a song, you can relate to whatever. You make it your own. If you find out, uh, if you find out it's about a specific thing, sometimes it like takes away from your own experience. So I think it's better the way he leaves it. Just leaving it for the listener to make their own. It's better, you know. People ask all the time, you know, what does that mean? What does this number mean? Why is that? But uh, just leave it. Leave it for them. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. Sometimes he'll tell me just because I've known him as a friend for so long. You know, I'll be like, oh, this song's about you know so and so. But really, so and so. Yeah, it's just whoever you know it may be at the time. So. I'm not saying anything. <laughs> <laughs> leave it as a mystery. You leave some mystique to the whole try. rock and roll world. I, I try. Now, um, are you? Uh, I know he's into uh, into weapons. Are you uh, a weapon collector as well? No, no, I have no idea about that stuff. That's his thing. Uh, he's the, he's the only he's the only gun guy in the band. Nobody else really. Everybody. We're all completely the most five the five of the most different people you would ever stick in a band. We have nothing in common. At oh. all. <laughs> None of sounds, us. <laughs> sounds like why you've been able to keep such a stable lineup for so long. It looks like the last lineup change was 07, right? Yeah, thank God. Man, that was getting old. There was like that five year span where just people were just coming in and out for kind of every tour you had to teach somebody else the set list. And it was, so since 2007, it's been a very, very nice, smooth ride. <laughs> it's awesome. And, and, you know, maybe opposites are. Uh, are the key to at least to your stability yeah it works out fine we're all older everybody just branches off does their does their own thing you know throughout the day nobody's 
just go do your own thing, whatever passes the time, and make sure you show up to the stage when you got to go, go play. <laughs> Absolutely. Get, get her done. Yep. And uh, finally, um, this is from Chris Acosta. He pointed out that Hispanic gangs tag walls with old English script descended from Anglo-Saxons, then top it off with Roman numerals. Uh, what's next? Asian gangs using calligraphy and fractions to mark their territories? Did that, where did that all come from? <laughs> <laughs> I, think he, I, think, I think he works for the state of California. <laughs>